Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Yes, the WC3C, whoever they are, the W3C has lost their mind. Or maybe just received a big charitable contribution. I don't know. But we're going to have a look at them. Um, so, uh, this has been, uh, this is sort of in a way a follow up to a tinfoil hat time that we did on. DRM not too long ago. If uh, if you recall, I was, you know, getting frustrated with the amount of uh, I was frustrated with the amount of of uh, encryption on top of things, and so I sent out a a couple day study to see what out there all has DRM because of course DRM uh, is digital rights management, and um, the problem is. In United States and in many other places, any, absolutely any circumvision of any DRM type system is a completely prosecutable offense, which basically means if you have any type of device or any type of item or any type of media that has any level of encryption and you do something to break the encryption, no matter what the cause is, you can be prosecuted for that. And the kitty's up here to say, don't use DRM stuff. It sucks. All right. Um, but the thing is, is um, what's really significant about this uh, this standard, and we'll talk more about this standard as we go. But what's more, what's the most significant about this standard is what you can do with it as far as the web is concerned, and and the concessions that they have thrown out. So. Um, Really briefly, again, you know, DRM is is nothing seriously new, and in reality, the number of um, you know that that what ends up happening is is a DVD itself is encrypted. So if you take a DVD, it's an encrypted device. Yes, Kitty, it is. <laughs> um, and you put that DVD, cute cat. Um, you put that DVD into a DVD player and it will decrypt it as it goes and it will play your movie on the screen. Okay. And, uh, but the, the problem is if you do anything to try and get that movie off the screen, even record it on the screen. And then if you have something like a good Linux system, that's running something like simple screen recorder. So you start your simple screen recorder, you put your DVD in the DVD drive with a DVD codex that you've paid for and then uh, play your DVD on the screen while it's recording, you are breaking the DMCA and the owner of that movie, um, particularly it would be the MPAA, the Motion Pictures Association of America, would, would come and basically throw you in jail for a long time and sue you for everything you have because you took a DVD that you legally owned and took a legal copy. Now, I agree if you take a DVD that you buy at the store or maybe you go out to Redbox and you rent a DVD for a dollar and you come back and you make a copy of that DVD, if you make a copy of the Redbox DVD for yourself, I think that that's wrong. If you make a copy of a DVD your own or one from Redbox and you distribute it on the internet, that's wrong. That's a moral wrong thing to do. Okay, but if you take that same DVD, you make the copy so that you can easily watch that d DVD on any of your personal devices, you are still susceptible to the prosecution under DMCA section 1201. And that is really what the problem is with DM uh, with DRM as a, as a whole is DRM is an encryption on any type of media device. So where I was most frustrated is with eBooks. So um, of course I had the Kindles and things. Now I think this still has a Kindle on it. There's one book I have on DRM that's for research for a book I'm working on that I'm going to keep around. Uh, so this still has Kindle on it. I cut Kindle off of all my other devices. Uh, no kitty. Kitty wants this. Whoa, he wants this. Yes, he does. <laughs> okay, that's what he wants. Um, and so, um, the uh, with DRM, uh, in general, it's 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 bad enough it exists because it allows a service 
to do things you wouldn't other, otherwise do. So for example, what the internet is supposed to be and what the W3C is a consortium of people who oversees web standards. And we'll talk about web standards and a little bit more about them in a bit. But what happens is with, uh, with for example, a web-based service, and our entire world's going web-based services, you get a service like Netflix. So if I'm here in the United States and I have Netflix, it, I cannot watch a Netflix queue uh, that's from Europe or I can't watch it from Canada if I'm in the United States. So you're kind of stuck between the various types of uh, the various types of places that you're locked at. And what happens is that the internet becomes a different place for you here than it is there. And that's the exact thing that the W3C is supposed to overrule and and basically make the web the web no matter where you are. Um, and so that's a little bit, I mean, this is a really complicated, multi-layered thing. So we're trying to get through it, uh, hopefully. <laughs> All right. I had an update on my Windows 7 laptop yesterday and it destroyed my graphics card driver. Oh boy, have fun. Um, no, no help here. Sorry. Um, other than go back and see if you can't install a previous version of a driver. That's what you'd need to do. Um, but anyway, um, with this uh, DRM issue going on now, the one of the best places, uh, best articles was this one from from the EFF here, and uh, let me get their article up there real quick. There we are. Okay, so they had this one. Now um, the other thing, of course, there's so many things going on in the web world today. Um, with uh, with um, uh, net neutrality is another thing. So if you actually come to EFF's site, you should. Um, I might have killed it. I don't know. Um, well, you maybe were. Um, I, I deployed a script today that destroyed every known ad, um, every known ad network and um, every known bad site out there in the internet. I deployed it across my network today as a test. And uh, so you'll see, actually, I took down, I took um, uh, ad blocker off. I'm seeing if, if this is more effective than ad blocker. The problem with running ad blocker is you're, it, you either get annoyed by the ads or you get annoyed by the things to say, hey, please wait this ad blocker so we can annoy you with ads. So I'm just said, never mind. And I'm just deployed a script today. It's like a 2.9 megabyte hosts file that just thousands and thousands and thousands of entries to wipe out everything that's not the server I want it to be. So um, basically, um, basically, uh, uh, when you go to EFF.org, you should get a pop-up which explains that today is also the day about net neutrality. So if you come here or many of your other favorite sites that are doing battle with this net neutrality thing, Go ahead and send a letter out today to the FCC and to the representatives and say, guys, this is ridiculous. You got to keep net neutrality where it is. But regardless, come to EFF and uh, you'll get this, uh, this uh, uh, article here on DRM. Now, the challenge is... The, the challenge here is, is that the W3C is in charge of web compliance standards. So for a long time in the web world, as I'm a web developer, the most hilarious thing is that Internet Explorer was the least compliant browser. Like the thing just didn't work. You built your site for everything else. And the only redeeming factor of Internet Explorer is it's also the only browser that accepts if uh, conditional if statements. So literally you build your site for everything else and then you rebuild the site for Internet Explorer using these crazy conditional commands to fix stuff. And so uh, that's kind of that's kind of the thing that uh, that that uh, um, you're uh, you're trying to do there. And so um, the challenge here is they added a standard and it's actually the encrypted media extensions. They added this standard for the encryption media standards, which basically says that this is our standard that now to say that this web browser is DR, uh, or W3C compliant, now this is a standard that is built into that, uh, that uh, individual uh, browser. Now, here's the problem. Okay, the W3C has the legal global authority that when it includes a standard, they can make certain requirements on people who are using that standard. 
okay? So with Netflix, the only way that you can watch Netflix on a browser is if your browser has a way to decrypt the encrypted media information that is coming across the internet. So it comes across the internet as an encrypted package and something on your browser has to decrypt that. Now, you can run that with a plugin, which is a proprietary thing. And if Netflix maintained a proprietary plugin, nobody would really care. Because if you have that big issue with it, you don't use Netflix, okay? Um, but the problem is, as, as they were talking about making the standard and they're talking about implementing this, they had the authority to say, by using these standards, you may not prosecute people breaking encryption for legal reasons or non-pirate reasons is, is really how it was. Because of course, it's never legal to break encryption in the United States according to the DMCA, okay? And so even if you're not doing anything crazy or psychopathic with your DVD, you bring it home, you decrypt it to put it on your media server and, and spread it across just your own local network, you're breaking the law. That's the problem. Now, the problem here with what W3C did is they said, we are adding these extension, uh, encrypted media extensions with no, uh, no other conditions. And the problem is a lot of people were saying, you, it, we have no problem with you adding this so long as there is a condition, there's a condition that... Um, uh, you cannot prosecute somebody who's either doing security research or legal copyright things. All right. So that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at. Um, so basically, so now as Netflix feeds, if you utilize Netflix own proprietary thing, yeah, you really can't break that. And you're just risking using Netflix. You trust them that they're not doing things they shouldn't be doing and that their system is secure. You have, that's a level of trust, and I, and, and I still think that should be uh, something that is allowable research, but it's not, and that has a lot of security researchers concerned. Now, what this standard says, though, is that now Netflix does not need to have their own plugin. It's incorporated into the browser, and the problem is security researchers are st still not allowed to poke around in the browser to make sure that these will not violate any of those standards. That is the real challenge. Well, I see I have a lot of folks jumped on here. And uh, DRM is an annoying firewall, basically. Yep. Uh, let's see. Oh, where's my comment screen at? There's my comment screen. All right. This rule is the exact opposite to the mission statement. Yes, it is the exact opposite of the mission statement. The mission statement is totally opposite of what this, what this group is supposed to be doing and what they say. Uh, good evening, Jan Su Finn. How's it going there? I am doing well. Let's see. If I buy a picture of a cookie with Amazon and it can only be opened on a website, if I take a screenshot, can I go to jail? Okay, let's, let's tear that apart. If I buy a picture of a cookie with Amazon. Okay, so you're buying a picture of a cookie with Amazon and it can only be opened on I'm guessing on Amazon's website, if you take a screenshot, can you go to jail? The answer to that question is yes! Yes, you can go to jail, I'm going on fire. Okay, that is the absurdity, okay? The absurdity, if you buy a picture on Amazon and it can only display the picture on Amazon, and you take a screenshot of the picture while it's displaying on Amazon and you crop out all the Amazon, you have circumvented DMCA and that is a federal felony. Pack your bags, you're going to prison. 500 to 20,000 whatever dollar fine for taking a picture of a picture. <sighs> my late hey the shark how's it going yeah a little late <laughs> no end to the greed of the corporations buffering badly again probably on my end 
Well, I don't know. It is that net neutrality day. Maybe uh, maybe YouTube's participating in that net neutrality thing as well. All right, so let's have a look at this this cool web standard. We're not going to go through all this because this is crazy, and I'm a web developer, and I don't even understand it, so it's all good. Uh, but, but what I want you to pay attention to is look at these editors. Google, Microsoft, Netflix. I think Google's the safest one on that list. Now that Microsoft, I don't know if you're aware of this, but in the, cre I think it was the creator's update. Okay, so you can get the, is it the Groove Music? No, is it the Groove Music or is it, it was either Groove Music or maybe it was Napster, I forget. But you, when you download a file, people were saying, I cannot, uh, I cannot, um, I think it was, I read this on Napster. Let me see if I can find this. I gotta see if I can find this. This is, this is hilarious. This is hilarious. I gotta find this article here. Um, uh, I think that's, no, that's just a playlist. I don't want a playlist. Uh, what I'm looking for is there is on the help portion, um, people were saying that, hey, I can no longer listen to my music offline. Where's that help at? In terms of use, Deem, buy gift, company, cheers, press. Is it blog? I thought it was a forum. All right, let me try this. So it, people are at Napster. Um, let me see if I can find it on a basic search here. Okay, oh, okay, here it is. All right. Cannot download, play offline, or use MP3 players with Napster PC after Windows 10 Anniversary Update. Users who have installed Windows 10 Anniversary Update on their PC will no longer play, be able to play downloaded tracks or play tracks offline. Some users may not be able to access Napster PC client. It may take you through an error message. Please check your internet connection and may fail to log into Napster PC client. You may also get similar error messages when you try to authorize, play, or stream downloaded tracks given below. The Windows Media Player encountered an error. Check your internet connection. Computer cannot be authorized. Playback MC. Okay, cause. The issue occurs because Microsoft released the Windows 10 anniversary update on 2nd of August 2016, which removes support for WM DRM tracks and offline playback. Devices, device sync would also fail. Translation, they took the ability to download the song from your Windows 10 computer and took it off the computer. In order to stream this or listen to it, the computer has to be connected to the internet because it goes out to Microsoft to decrypt the song to play it back to you even if it's stored on your local computer. Let that seep in for a second. <laughs> 